we gather here today to remember the life of Mr. Thomas Patterson Stewart. Patterson was someone who was a pivotal member of the Stewart family, or church here in Mountjoy, the agricultural and business sector in this area for a long number of years. We gather to surround you, uh, really, Alison, Elaine and Heather, and the wider Patterson or Stuart family circle today with our love and with our prayers. We focus on God as we gather together to worship him. And so we hear these words from Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you may be where I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So let's stand as we worship God together. We sing the lovely hymn, penned by John Newton. Amazing grace, how sweet is it. and comfort. You are the God of all compassion. And we meet in the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that you would meet with us and reveal your grace and mercy and help. Remind us that you are slow to anger and tender towards us, your children. Remind us of your amazing grace. Your grace has brought us to this day, and your grace will lead us all. 
We thank you that you are the God who gives us strength for the journey in life. No matter what we face in the journey of life, we have the assurance that you are with us, that you never leave us nor forsake us. New every morning is your faithfulness. And we come to you, our Father, through Jesus. We thank you for Jesus, the Saviour, who came into this world and lived and died and rose again. And so we are filled with hope and peace and joy, even in the midst of grief, because Christ has defeated death and he is present with us by his Holy Spirit. We thank you that through the death of Jesus, a new way has been opened to all who believe in him, so that no one may perish, but all may enjoy everlasting life as they trust in Christ. And so today, as we read your word, and as we sing your praises, and as we remember Patterson's life before you, and turn to your word, we pray that you will lift us from the anxiety and the sadness at the death of our friend Patterson, and that we would know your light in the midst of our darkness, that we would know your peace in the midst of our turmoil. Bring your peace and your calm into all our hearts, but especially to Patterson's wife, Brady, and to his daughters, Heather, Elaine, and Allison, his son-in-laws, his grandchildren, and his brother and sisters, and to all who knew and loved him. We thank you for Patterson and how his life touched so many people. We thank you for the love given and the love received, time spent and enjoyed in his presence, lessons we learned from him, and how we were all blessed and enriched by his life. So we come to you in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say with one heart and one voice, Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The family circle appreciate you being here today and it means a lot to them and they thank you for your support over recent days since uh, Patterson's death on Monday. In particular they want to thank Dr. Arkinson for his care and attention to Patterson uh, particularly over the last number of weeks and to the district nurses Barbara and Rachel, the Marie Curie nurses and the healthcare assistants and the, the kind neighbours and family and friends. Uh, who were always there for Patterson and for his family. And in particular, the family paid uh, specific uh, tribute uh, to you, Andrew McFarland, for all your care uh, to Patterson on the farm uh, to make the transition over the last few weeks uh, much easier. And so they want to publicly acknowledge that today. After the service and the committal, everyone is invited to the church hall and we have the main hall and the minor hall where the ladies have been busy uh, preparing refreshments and there will be an opportunity uh, to meet and greet with the family and to offer your condolences uh, to them. At this point in the service I'm going to invite Alison uh, to come forward and to uh, read a poem uh, that Alison uh, composed herself just the other night uh, as she sat with her dad. These thoughts came to mind um, just a few hours before Dad died. My father's hands, strong hands, big hands, hands to dance the jive and to woo the love of his life, tender hands that held me and carried me home for the first time, hands that changed nappies and pushed swings, dug sand castles and held ice creams. Hands that led a pony in a parade, a bull by the nose, drove a tractor through fields and struck auction hammer blows. 
hands to pray, love and laugh, hands to give a Saturday night bath, hands to walk us all up the aisle and always be there with a reassuring smile, hands to cuddle grandchildren and help a friend in need. In these last weeks, I have held those precious hands, but now I leave them in the hands of another father, the one who his dad's name engraved on the palm of his hand. I leave him with the one who upholds us with his righteous right hand, and where I know someday I will hold dad's hand again. Thank you, Alison, for those lovely words, and uh, we appreciate that. And I know your dad would as well, uh, that lovely <clears throat> poem. We're going to turn now and read God's Word. And today we're going to read from Psalm 84 for a few reasons. Patterson was aged 84. I read it to him recently. But also, Last March, when we gathered in Kilmacrenan for uh, the funeral service for Patterson's uh, sister Kay, we sang Psalm 84. And it goes to the tune when you sing it, uh, The Hills of Bloody Gold. So, for all of those reasons, we're going to now read Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young. A place near your altar, O Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, they are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength, till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, O Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, O God of Jacob. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. O Lord Almighty, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Amen. And then some words from Jesus, recorded in Matthew chapter 7. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had a foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. And then some verses from the Apostle Paul, recorded in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, 
but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but be, to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God who made us, and for this very purpose has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and each one may receive what is due to him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Amen. And we thank God for these readings from his word. Amen. Patterson was blessed to grow up in a loving family. His mother Ethel and his father Peter, and along with his siblings, Jean, Ethel, George, Dorothy, and the late Ruby, John, Kathleen, Maud, Kelso, Robert, Frank, and Herbie. And George and Ethel and Jean and Dorothy, we surround you today on the loss of a loving brother. You were blessed to have Patterson as your brother. He was that go-to person when you needed some advice. Always reliable, steady and dependable. The one that you could call your brother. And you indeed were blessed to have Patterson as your brother. Patterson was born in Kilmacrenan in County Donegal 84 years ago. And that's another blessing. Not everyone can say that. <laughs> born in Donegal, moving here then to live in Mountjoy, along with his parents and his, uh, most of the, the siblings. And they came here in 1950, and that was a long, at the beginning of a long and blessed association with Mountjoy and Oma and this community. The home in Castletown was always an open door for family, for friends and neighbours, and especially the Walkers, the Fultons, the McFarlands and the Clark family, all gathering in on a Sunday evening maybe, and Peter would take out the fiddle and there would be a sing-song of gospel hymns. One night, and by my reckoning, it was 1959, Patterson made his way to Mountjoy Hall for a church social. And so did a young lady called Rainy Jack. <laughs> Their eyes caught across the hall. Love blossomed. Rainy was 15 and Patterson was 19. And they were married in first over nine years later. Rainy, you two were blessed with a loving husband. You and Patterson were so different, but yet you were so such a great team together. And Patterson told me recently one day that he was blessed to have a loving wife who did so much for him. And he said, you know, Jonathan, behind every good man, there's even a better woman. <laughs> so high praise and well deserved. And you really enjoyed setting up home in Castletown, working on the farm, working together in the business, traveling, and enjoying many happy occasions together. And I know those happy occasions will bring you strength as you draw comfort from your 55 years of marriage. Patterson's blessings continue with the arrival of his three daughters, Alison, Elaine, and Heather. You too were blessed to have a loving dad. 
One who brought you to swimming classes. One who brought you to pony trekking and gym cannas all around the country. Family holidays in Canada. Time together. The one who was always there for you. The one who encouraged you to work hard, achieve your best. He instilled the values of honesty, integrity and hard work. And you were blessed in many ways to have Patterson as your dad. You know that. His encouraging words, his handshake, his hug, his smile, his kindly deeds and his constant presence in your life. And Patterson was also blessed with three son-in-laws, Colin and David and Kenny. And you know that Patterson welcomed you warmly into the family. And you too have your own memories of a loving father-in-law. And then there were six other blessings. The grandchildren. And to you, Grace and Adam and Stuart and Catherine and step-grandson Stephen and Andrew. You had a loving granddad who enjoyed birthday parties with you. And enjoyed the fun and games, just enjoyed spending time with you. And he often spoke of you. And I have a memory of Patterson uh, maybe bringing Catherine or Stuart to church and looking after them and not a bother to him. And uh, such was his nature. The Lord blessed Patterson in many other ways. He blessed him with a sound mind and a, an entrepreneurial spirit. He began his auctioneering business uh, on premises near Sacred Heart in Oma. And that's, he soon developed a reputation for being a wise and efficient businessman. We all know that Patterson liked to talk. <laughs> Brady would say that Patterson would say, I'm just going to the bank, I'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> Two hours later, many a time I saw Patterson standing speaking to people in Oma High Street. He was a great talking man. I've heard that. I know that. You know that. He could talk about everything and anything, but with a genuine interest in people and a caring nature, caring for people. He developed a solid business, auctioneering and attending local marts. And Friday would have been a day when Patterson would have been at the mart. And it didn't matter if you sold a hundred cows or one cow. Patterson treated you fairly. With integrity and honesty. We here in Mount Joy Church were blessed to have Patterson as one of our members. Loyal. Devoted. Faithful. Steady. Always in the place of worship. Never to miss always faithful. Patterson served on our church committee and we remember his wise words and his many deeds of kindness. I personally want to pay my own tribute to Patterson. Maybe it was that Donegal connection but he took me under his wing when I came here 10 years ago and looked out for me. He was a real encourager. He loved a good sermon. Now whether he got it or not was another. <laughs> Recently we studied the book of Ecclesiastes and numerous times Patterson said, I told numbers, the number of people to watch the service on YouTube. He was listening and he was telling others. Patterson welcomed people into this church. There wasn't a visitor but Patterson made it his business to know who they were and talk to them. And before they left, they left as friends. And even our sister church, Drumliga, he was very faithful in supporting Drumliga at harvest and Christmas and other <laughs> events. Truly a blessed life. And I think the words of Eugene uh, Peterson, a Presbyterian a minister in New York, he said that a disciple, a follower of Jesus, is someone who has long obedience in the same direction. And that for me describes Patterson. Not given to flights of fancies up or down. Not in church one week and then disappearing for six and then back another week. Steady, reliable, long obedience in the one direction. A blessed life. And you here today know that too. And I'm sure you were blessed in one way or another by Patterson and Reedy's generosity 
and their hospitality and their kindness. And now as we turn to Psalm 84, Psalm 84 is all about blessing. And it would give us three blessings. First of all, we're told in verse 4, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. You see, there's a blessing to gather together to worship. As we are doing today. And as we do every Sunday. Because the psalmist would say that when we worship God, it's a blessing. Because it's, we sing, it's a place of song and praise. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. It's a place of welcome. Even the little swallows find a nest. There's room for everyone. <coughs> and so, Patterson lived that verse out. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. We could take some encouragement from that today. If you have a church, go to it this Sunday. Worship the God, the living God, this Sunday. Follow Patterson's example. We could learn a lot from that. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. But that also brings that picture of a house in heaven. There is blessing in heaven because it is a place of song and praise and it's a place of welcome. And we can go there one day when we trust in Jesus and put our hope in him. Patterson told me a few weeks ago that he was prepared to go home. He wanted to go home. The last words that I heard Patterson say last Sunday evening, I think it was, I want to go to heaven. Surely if they were your, to be your last words, there could be nothing better to say, I want to go home. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. And then as we move on, there's another blessing. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. Patterson was on a pilgrimage. Kel McCrennan, Mount Joy, Heaven. We're all on a pilgrimage somewhere. And God gave Patterson the strength for the journey. And even in the last few weeks when he was diagnosed with cancer at the end of March, God gave Patterson the strength to cope. And you, his family, he gave you the strength. And we read there that when we pass through the Valley of Baca, that's the Valley of Tears. We're in the Valley of Tears today. When we lose someone that we know and love. And maybe you can identify with that today. You're in your own valley. But what does this psalm tell us in verse 5? Blessed are those who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. That God gives you the strength. God gives you the strength to keep going. Long obedience in the one direction. He gave Patterson the strength to cope with his illness over recent weeks. And God sustained him. God helped him. And so we are to look to God as we journey through life and seek his strength that he gives to us. And then there's a final blessing, verse 12. Blessed is the one who trusts in you. If you trust in Jesus, you are blessed. You are blessed in trust in Jesus. Blessed is the one who relies on God. Blessed is the one who depends on Jesus. And what does trust look like? Well, we're going to go and view a property. Two properties. Can you imagine Patterson taking us to view these two properties that are recorded in Matthew's Gospel? Two lovely houses. One is built on sand and one is built on rock. The one built on the rock lasts. The one built on sand disappears. It crashes and tumbles. But the house built on the rock stands firm. And so Jesus exhorts us to build our lives on him alone. We are to trust in Jesus Christ alone. 
Nothing else will bring us home to heaven. Only Christ, because all other ground is sinking sand. And when we trust in Jesus, we will have the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus. When we trust in Jesus. May it be said of us today that we too are blessed. May it be said of us that we know the Lord Jesus and have trusted in him. And may we know the blessings of sins forgiven. That's the real blessing in life. Sins forgiven. Conscience cleansed. Forgiven. And then you know one day that you can go and be blessed at that home in heaven. On this coronation weekend, many people will say, God save the king. But you and I need to pray, God save me. Blessed is the person who trusts in God. Blessed is the person whose strength for the journey is in God. And blessed is the one who dwells in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for your presence with us in this place today by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for Patterson and all that was good and true and all that he achieved in life. We thank you for your work of grace and your grace has brought him safe thus far and your grace has led him home. What will our last words be? No better words than to say, I want to go to heaven. And we thank you for Patterson you made him, you know him, you loved him. We thank you for all the ways that you blessed Patterson. We thank you for the values that he lived by. Hard work, honesty, kindness, integrity. We thank you that Patterson lived his life with a long obedience in one direction that has brought him home to heaven. We thank you for the many memories that we share of Patterson. Time in his company, love given and love received, the times of laughter and fun. We thank you for his life. <coughs> and so we surround his wife, Rini, with our love and prayers. Elaine and Colin, Heather and David, Alison and Kenny, Grace and Adam, Stuart and Catherine, and Stephen and Andrew, and George, and Jean, and Ethel and Dorothy. They will feel the pain the most because they knew Patterson the most and they loved him the most. So give them the strength as they go through the Valley of Baca. Come by your Spirit and surround them with your grace. Lead them on, we pray. Father God, we thank you for the doctors and nurses and rapid response and the Marie Curie nurses and all who made Patterson's final few weeks comfortable. And for all who showed love and care, we give you thanks. And Lord, we long for the day when cancer will be no more. And we remember others who are on a journey, their own journey today, with that dreadful disease. And we remember them and pray for your healing touch to be upon them. And Father, we thank you for the depth of your love for us. We thank you for the blessing that can be ours when we come to Jesus and when we trust in Jesus. We thank you for the blessing of strength for the journey. We thank you for the blessing of a home in heaven. So help each one of us to turn towards Jesus today. To know his peace and comfort. And to look forward then to a life eternal. And this we pray through Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen.
He stand to sing one of Patterson's favourite hymns. He just loved this hymn. And I think it's so appropriate for a funeral service that when someone believes in Jesus and trusts in Jesus, they have victory and that the grave does not have the final say. So let's stand and sing praise to God. I heard an old, old story. Patterson Stewart on his final journey to his earthly resting place, we pray that we would all know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with us. Amen. And as we leave, Adele will play 
uh, the, the tune that we sing, Psalm 84, to How Lovely Is Thy Dwelling Place. <laughs> 